Hannah, thanks for joining us. Uh, what is the Our Time movement and what is it trying to do? So the Our Time movement is a national youth-led movement uh, pushing for a Green New Deal. And we are supported by the environmental organization 350, um, but it's really a grassroots movement, as I said, led by youth uh, all across the country. I think we have something more like uh, like 10 or so main hub cities, and then uh, thousands of youth organizing across the country. And, uh, and as I said, we're pushing for a Green New Deal this election. So with the release of the IPCC report last October, um, which said that we have uh, 12 years, now 11, uh, to take drastic action on climate change in order to avoid um, catastrophic warming of 1.5 degrees, um, the movement of the Green New Deal really uh, started. It started in the U.S. in the U.S. and uh, and it spread to to Canada around, I'd say, like February or so. We started organizing, and uh, with the federal election coming up, we realized that this is really uh, our one of our one last best chance to actually do something about climate change um, and to put in uh, place leaders who are going to, who take climate action seriously, who understand what we need to do. Um, and so we started organizing around, uh, around doing that in the form of a Green New Deal. Does the movement or the Green New Deal it's seeking have a position on Indigenous rights and sovereignty? Yes. Uh, so as I mentioned, the Green New Deal started off in the in the U.S., but then was adapted uh, in our in the Artime movement uh, as a Green New Deal for Canada. And so one of the I think really foundational things that was added when. Um, we, as we adapted and we thought about what does a green new deal like uh, a, a green new deal look like in Canada was thinking about uh, indigenous rights and sovereignty so the the four pillars of the green new deal that uh, that I guess represents our vision here with our time are first um, uh, taking uh, climate action um, seriously um, acting with the urgency that science demands. Second, um, creating millions of jobs, of good uh, low carbon jobs, um, and a just transition. Third, making sure that this transition lifts up all communities, that no one is left behind, that everyone has a seat at the table, and that uh, equity, uh, equality, justice, dignity is really at the center. Um, and then fourth, uh, and again, not to say that it's the, <laughs> the least important, I think they're mm -hmm. all equal, but then, then fourth we added this pillar um, of Indigenous rights and, and respecting Indigenous sovereignty, thinking about uh, reconciliation, whatever that looks like, um, thinking about, I think, implementing UNDRIP is one of the really important uh, policy choices that that looks like. So yeah, so that is, so Indigenous rights and sovereignty is one of the four key pillars of the Green New Deal as our time sees it. Our time has endorsed the 13 federal candidates so far. Uh, how are they chosen and can you tell us about a few of them? So it was really important to us that this um, endorsement process uh, was really um, kind of coming from the grassroots and was coming from our time organizers. Um, so everyone who was nominated um, was nominated by um, an our time hub and they were nominated uh, after uh, someone from our time had actually met with them, had sat down and, and had a conversation about um, their history of of, uh, of organizing in the, in, in the community, about their connections to community, about uh, their understanding of climate action, of social justice, and what, that, what does that look like. Um, so that was the process that we took. Um, and I uh, personally took part uh, in a meeting with, uh, with Leah Gazan, um, and uh, who's the NDP candidate here in, in Winnipeg Center. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really, uh, inspiring to sit down face to face. We really appreciated that she took the time to meet with us, um, and uh, and we talked about um, her history of organizing in the community, her work again on indigenous rights through UNDRIP, which she uh, she traveled across across the country on her own initiative, on her own dime, um, pushing for UNDRIP to be implemented. So we were really impressed um, with with 
her understanding of those issues and also with her understanding of how that fits into climate act action um, and, the, and a transition off of fossil fuels. What about the parties? Have they committed so far to anything that uh, you believe is enough? Um, I mean, the short answer is, is no. <laughs> um, we're definitely seeing, I think, we're, we're seeing the language of the Green New Deal kind of be picked up. Uh, I think like both the NDP and the Greens have talked about it. Jagmeet Singh has like kind of used the language of the Green New Deal uh, to talk about his party's uh, platform on climate. But, um, but I think that we still have a long ways to go in terms of taking the, uh, the drastic action that we need to see and in terms of seeing all pieces of the Green New Deal um, fit in. So it's not just about um, it's, it's, it's about having a just transition, but it's not just about transitioning uh, like to everyone having an electric car, but we still you know, have these systems of, of inequality in place. Um, it's not a Green New Deal if there's not all the pieces to it, if there's not, um, if there's not the indigenous rights portion of it. Um, so I think that while we're getting there, I would really like to see um, more of the parties, ideally all of the parties, step up and really prove to us that they, that they understand how these issues are all, um, all connected and that in order to get to the place that we need to be, in order to have a future for ourselves, uh, we need everyone with us, we need everyone at the table, um, and we need everyone's voices and rights to be respected. Hannah, we'll have to leave it there, but appreciate you taking some time for us here today. Thanks very much.